Howdy guys, it's Liv here from Neighbourhood and welcome to our July HubSpot update. We're back again with a load of new updates for you this month as HubSpot continues to revamp its platform to ensure that you can better market, sell to and service your customers through 2021. This video is designed to give you a head start on all of the latest July features and updates, allowing you to be ahead of the game in the months ahead. Let's kick things off by taking a look at the updates currently in public beta. First off, HubSpot are looking at adding new features to the marketing events object. The new features will allow you to, one, edit marketing event data from the index page, two, create marketing events without an integration to capture all event data, three, create custom marketing event properties to leverage in HubSpot forms, site pages, or email, four, use marketing event data in dynamic pages to show an overview of upcoming events, and five, use marketing event data in revenue attribution reporting to understand the impact of events. With these new features, you'll be able to better create, manage, and use marketing event data throughout HubSpot CRM platform, making your job a whole lot easier. The second update in beta is the CMS source code API documentation. This public document enables developers and integrators to build modules through an API without ever entering the design manager. You'll be able to edit all your CMS assets locally and build tooling to help you move even faster. The third public beta update is the advanced campaign filters. The Marketing Campaigns app is leveling up with their filters. In line with CRM standards for filtering, HubSpot will be adding all the default campaign properties as available filters and opening up all the same operators so customers can set filters such as campaign name, campaign notes, and campaign owner. Fourth on the public beta list is the new home for goal creation and monitoring. This is essentially a console page displaying the status of active goals and a wizard experience for creating sales quotas. With the new release, it will become easier for HubSpot users to create and monitor their HubSpot goals. Now, quotas can be assigned to teams, not just individual reps. In addition, quotas can be assigned to quarterly and annual milestones, not just monthly. The next update in beta is sandboxes for enterprise users. Sandboxes are production-like accounts where customers can safely try new things with the context, but not the impact of production. These accounts mirror the features, functionality, and limits of the customer's production account. Sandbox accounts are marked as low trust to prevent users from sending emails and calling from them. These sandboxes are different from CMS sandboxes and developer test accounts. Another feature in public beta to get excited about is the product module support for marketing emails. HubSpot will be launching a new email content module that allows you to quickly and easily insert products into your marketing emails. This will fully support HubSpot native products today. In fact, HubSpot are currently working on integrating third-party products like Shopify in the next phase of beta. Beta update Number seven, you can view external published social media posts in HubSpot. You can now see data from the social posts you've published outside of HubSpot alongside your HubSpot published posts for more comprehensive social reporting. As an added bonus, this will also include post types not currently supported by HubSpot Publishing, such as Instagram carousel post data and Twitter poll data. There'll be an option in the HubSpot Manage tab to filter these posts from either internal or external sources. Also in beta, all developer accounts will require their users to set up two-factor authentication for login. When two-factor authentication is required on a developer account, HubSpot will automatically send a notification via email to the users on that account that that they have 72 hours to set up two-factor authentication to protect their login. After 72 hours, if they attempt to access the account, they'll be forced to set up two-factor authentication before they can continue. After this, anytime they log into HubSpot with their password, HubSpot will also challenge them to verify their login with a second factor, either via text message or security app. Last up for the public beta updates, Google lead syncing. You will soon be able to sync leads gathered from Google Ads into HubSpot CRM automatically. Running lead form ads on Google is a great way to obtain contact information of users interested in your products or services. Being able to sync them into HubSpot CRM means that HubSpot users can utilize the full power of HubSpot's tools on contacts they've collected through Google lead form advertising. This integration will sync contact and form information from any Google lead form ad. Now that was a big list of new features to look forward to, now let's have a look at what's new and ready to use in HubSpot today. 
starting with sales. You can now review your rep's calls on your phone, not only on iOS, but on Android as well. Once you update to the latest version of the iOS or Android app, recorded calls are available within the recorded calls button from the More tab in the app. Here, you'll see a list of all the calls that have been recorded in your HubSpot desktop portal, both video or audio. As well for sales, admins can now restrict or enable a user's ability to create custom line items on quotes or deals. Previously, any user could create custom line items and add those custom line items to a quote. The new Create Custom Line Items permission gives admins the control to give this functionality to users who need it and restrict it for users who might misuse it. For enterprise customers with bigger teams, this is a requirement. The permission, like any other permission, can also be turned off and on for roles in users and teams. Next up, HubSpot have provided a refreshed set of workflow templates. Your workflows tool now has 12 fresh new templates that'll make it easier to automate your most common use cases. This includes nurturing first conversions, notifying your sales reps about leads, setting notifications when a meeting is scheduled, assigning new web leads, welcoming blog subscribers, re-engaging cold leads, receiving customer feedback, promoting new products, sending confirmation emails, and defining a customer profile. Moving on now to the upgraded workflows mini-map. HubSpot have made it easier to navigate around your workflows to review or update automated processes. To pen the mini-map, click the Show Minimap text in the upper left-hand corner of the workflows editor. Hover over the map with your cursor to see the names of the actions and branches. When you find where you want to go, click to jump to that part of the workflow. Alternatively, you can click and drag within the mini-map to easily scroll around the workflow editor. When you're done, hide the map using the collapse arrow in the upper right corner. Last up, what's new in the HubSpot CMS? Well, developers can now use new styling controls in their custom modules. There are now six new style fields that developers can select from. They are order field, gradient field, alignment field, text alignment field, background image field, and spacing field. In the page editor, click on custom module. Click on the style tab and then modify any of the controls populated there to change the style of the custom module. And that's it for this month. I hope you enjoyed these updates and are as keen as we are to start implementing them today. But as a reminder, if you ever need any extra help ensuring that you're making the most of your HubSpot investment, we're just an email away. If you need someone to tell you where you might be going wrong in HubSpot, what you can improve or what you're not using to its maximum potential, sign up for a portal audit today. These are completely free, so there's absolutely no excuse not to. But for now, that's all from me. Happy HubSpotting.